Hello, good morning, wonderful people. Um, today's subject is from Overwhelm to Clarity. Um, I said yesterday I'd talk to you about the three steps that take us from how to make a good decision without fear of failure or feelings of guilt. And the first thing is clarity. You have to make a decision. Now, one of the challenges with Overwhelm is that you can find yourself um, with, you know, if Overwhelm comes, I think, for two reasons. This is my experience anyway, and you can tell me if it's different for you but you either get a huge amount of information coming in and maybe you've got lots of decisions to make or you've got one major decision to make that's going to impact lots of areas of your life and you get stuck in indecision. And it's when you have got lots of unmade decisions that your brain becomes, so even if it's a decision of when you're gonna sort something out, so let's say you've got a whole list of things on the to-do list, if you don't know when you're gonna deal with it, your brain's going, oh, what's happening in this? What are we doing? And so an unmade decision can create overwhelm. And so I, the first step is curiosity. The first step is you have to be prepared to, to stop and ask questions, but you're gonna need a resource of courage because when you're in overwhelm, sometimes the thought of actually asking questions or even asking for advice or opinion, I don't know about you, you're in overwhelm, and I'm gonna have to sort of hands because my arm's getting tired. Um, you, you go and ask a friend or a family member uh, what they think and then they give you a whole load of new stuff that you didn't even think was in the equation. So now not only have you got the stuff you already were debating within your head, you've now got a whole load of other things to think about. Or you try and express it to somebody and they question it. So I just wanna take you back a bit. I, it's actually 10 years this week that I uh, qualified or certified as a clean language facilitator. And I just wanna share this view with you. I'm actually sat at the top near top of Portsdown Hill. I don't know if you can see the sea and the, the, the harbour out there, but I've never been up this pathway, okay? I've been to Marion Way's house for clean learning, I don't know, hundreds if not thousands of times in the last 10 years. I'm going there today as an assistant. Um, they're running a, a refresher course and a, a, um, a fine tuning course for facilitators who've recently done their training or people who just want to develop it further. And I suspect I'll develop my skills as well. And I'm there as a client today so that people have got people, someone to practice on. And I just wanted to sort of take you back because the reason I got into this work wasn't because I understood the value of improving the way that I listened to myself without judgment or criticism. It was because I was a coach, a mentor in the slimming world, and I was finding that talking was no longer enough to motivate change in other people. And so overwhelm will come when you're talking and talking and talking and nothing changes. All right, or other people are talking and talking and talking, i.e. telling you this, you could do this, giving you loads of suggestions, and nothing fits. It is the most debilitating, the most horrendous place to be when you know you have to make a decision, and no matter how much you talk to other people, or how much they talk to you, nothing makes it feel any better. You can feel completely isolated, completely alone, and like it's not worth it. And I used to get huge success with my slimming clients. And then after about four years, I started to see a pattern where people that had lost like seven, eight stone would come back with having gained the weight and not kept it off. And I was frustrated that the motivation that I was um, achieving wasn't stickable. And so I started to look at, because obviously standing at the class, telling people what to eat, telling people how to do things, um, applauding them and accountability and cheerleading is absolutely vital parts of the process it's not a criticism of that process there was just it needed something more and so I went off in May 2006 to find out about coaching and I trained to be a coach and it, I did took two years and I qualified December 2008 and that very month that I qualified I went to a coaches practice group and I met Marion Way and at that point, I'd been practicing for two years and what I came across, the wall I came across is I wasn't sure I would be questioning, my critic was criticizing myself for, am I asking good questions? You know, how quickly should they get the transformation? Why aren't they changing quickly enough? And when I came across clean language, because I had to, it, all of that stuff was to do with my own approval. It was my own measure of success. And I was feeling stressful because I wasn't sure where, I couldn't tell how much of it was because I wasn't asking the right questions as a coach and how much of it was just the person being the person doing it in the time frame that they've got to do it in. And coming across clean language um, gave me the opportunity to separate what was their story from my story. And I remember developing a resource over here. It was a, a wicker bin. I hope you can hear me over the uh, tree surgeons that have just started in the woods. <laughs> And um, I started to learn when an emotion came up was my stuff and it wasn't the client's. 
and I managed to suppress that and, and not show it on my face if it pushed a button or it didn't make sense to me. And I started to learn how beautiful it was for a human being to be honored, to be witnessed without suggestion, without opinion, without correction. But I also witnessed people who weren't able to get free into their own mind and be curious about themselves because they had stories that they told themselves about they weren't answering the questions quickly enough or if I don't know this you'll think I'm stupid if I don't know this you won't love me um, you won't you'll think worse of me you won't recommend me for business people I know there was a whole load of stories going on I really hope you can hear me okay it's very noisy here um, let's see if I can take a walk a bit further up and uh, without falling over so um, what I found on the journey was that there was this conflict between knowing whether they'd, I'd asked the question correctly versus it was just them answering the question the way that they did. And then there was the story for them going on about whatever they, rule they picked up from school about how you should answer questions. So in the chapter of Manager Critic from Overwhelmed to Clarity, I talk about this, what I've discovered over the years is there's like seven different kinds of listening most of us start talking without knowing what kind of listening we need and it's only when it doesn't feel right we then criticize somebody most of us say things without asking questions we, we someone says something and we respond straight away and we don't ask a question so today's task for you personal task is to think about what question could you be asking yourself right now how confident are you to be asked questions or to ask questions? Because it's all gonna start with curiosity. If you are not, I was asking the question, how can I motivate people more? And I looked into coaching and then I found clean language. And I've also discovered that everything I was doing before, the cheerleader in me going, yeah, you've done it, come on, well done, recognize when people are changing, knowing how to measure success in lots of different ways, all of they were valid. So there's the educate, where you tell people something, there's the empower, where you ask questions. And when you sort of like slinky back and forth between the two, you get these epiphany moments for yourself and others. But none of that can start if you don't have the confidence to ask a question or the courage to ask a question. If you don't have the confidence or the courage to actually ask the question and hear the truth. Because sometimes hearing the truth is the scary bit. And subconsciously, we already know the answer. We know we know the answer. And maybe we've already edited it. We think, I oh, can't have that. So having a safe space where you can actually talk to people and say what you really, really think so that you can hear it. Not about other people hearing it, but it does help if nobody judges it and nobody makes any comment on it and you can just check in with yourself. And so the first step to clarity is curiosity. And I think it's three core skills. You need to have to listen to yourself and others without judgment. You need to ask questions that are not loaded with your story, that you're just going, oh, tell me more about that. Is there anything else about that? Oh, what kind of is that? Oh, how does that work? And it's not because you think that they're doing it wrong or it should be a different way. So you're not asking a question to make them see something or change their mind. You're not trying to manipulate the situation. You're simply trying to understand what's happening for them. And likewise, you're asking yourself questions so that you can understand what's happening for you. And you have to be able to give evidence-based feedback. If someone says, I wanna be really good at something, and you're like looking at them thinking, you are already really good at that, um, then if you've got the evidence, if you just say, oh, you are really good, the brain can't um, process it. It's like, if they've, they've got a map, I'm not good, and you just say you are good, they can't hear it. So you have to collect the evidence. What did you actually hear and see? And what is your definition of good? So if good means this to you, so what I think good means this to me, and what I'm hearing and seeing is this, and so as far as I'm concerned, you're really good. You might ask them, so what's your definition of good? What would you hear and see that would tell you it's good? And it's when you share evidence-based feedback and you educate from your point of view and you ask questions, it's when the epiphanies can happen. It's when change happens. So the, the question today for you is, when you're questioning, or being questioned, that's like what? What's your experience of questions? What's the, in the minute I say that word, what happens to you? What is the story your critic says? What emotional response do you have? You know, is it something you're really excited about? Yeah, yeah, bring it on, I can't wait to be asked questions. They make me think and they stretch my imagination, da da da. Or is it an a, a overwhelming response of, oh my God, I don't know, I'm gonna look stupid. Be aware of that because 
that's the first step. You have to have the courage to go into the unknown and ask questions to build your confidence with being asked questions. Because when you can do that, then you can find clarity. And I look forward to telling you a little bit more tomorrow about language um, and about sort of being aware of the words that you use and helping you to ask questions about those words and which words to choose to ask questions of and why. Um, and that was the next thing I learned when I started going to clean language. I learned questions just from my coaching diploma. I learned another lot of questions when I went to clean language. And when I went to clean language training, it actually asked me, helped me work out what to ask questions of. Um, and that really did transform things. And what I've discovered now is anybody can ask me any question because I know how to answer questions generally. And even if their question takes me, my thinking to somewhere I don't want to go, I am quite happy to go, I don't want to go there right now. Because when we ask a loaded question, and even when we ask clean language questions, sometimes it takes people's thinking to somewhere they don't want to go and they, they're not ready to think about it. And so we have to go through a process of making sure we have their permission. But if this is for your development, you can give yourself permission right now to choose to be more curious. So tell me, when you are questioning, that's like what? Love, I look forward to hearing from you. And um, I am in the right process of putting together a seven day challenge, which will be um, going live towards the end of August, where if you've got lots of overwhelm and you've got lots of decisions to make, this will be for you. Seven days, online course, really accessible, um, affordable, with loads of extra bonuses, which I'm very excited about. Um, and so I'm gonna take you through modules. One, every day get a video, every day get an email and a worksheet, and you will be able to just get, sit down and actually work out how you're gonna get more curious, and more importantly, how you're gonna turn the overwhelm into clarity. See you tomorrow and we'll talk about language tomorrow.